you explain to Dad that if he wimps out on going to Yosemite, that he's got to take care of all your pets? He knows I already arranged sitters because I offered to share my sitter connections with him. He doesn't want strangers in the house. <laughs> I'm like, you realize I trust these people with my child? Yeah. I, I don't they're, think... They're findable at a later date. We know how to track them down if something... I don't right. think they're going to steal your blood pressure medication. <laughs> My drunk friends have been in your house when you're not there. That's way worse. Yeah, right? <laughs> McDonald's life. Oh, that McDonald life. Word life. Thug life. Basic thugonomics. <laughs> Everybody, we're back. It's the Booze and Spirits podcast. He always does this when my mouth is full. I'm like, should we get on track? And then he does an intro, and I'm still chewing a pizza roll. To be fair, my mouth's probably usually full. I was going to say something, and I was trying to find a polite way to say it, but... Fuck you in your face. <laughs> I'm Kate it's McDonald. Like a, I'm Nick McDonald. It's like a drink with death. Yeah, I was getting right through yeah. that. I, I was only half paying attention. Shocker! <laughs> Well, this is actually a back-to-back recording. This is weird because normally by the time we record an episode, I've already like listened to the last episode several times over the editing process. And you remember so, things from it, and like us recording yesterday to get ahead of things. And yeah, because yeah, we probably don't well, remember what we said yesterday. Preparing for vacation, and getting some extra episodes, and yeah, I don't remember what we said. Like I'm fairly sure that we decided that this topic was going to be pirates, but I don't know if we ever actually stated that. I think we stated it, and I was like, well, my story only sort of revolves with pirates, but we'll, well, we'll roll but with when it. We'll roll you with had, it. You had a story you really wanted to do, and you sent me, like, aspects of the story, and I picked one of those aspects that I thought I could get a story with, and one of the aspects was pirates. Yeah, and you know what? My aspects were easier than noisy ghosts and quiet ghosts, all right? So. <laughs> They're all noisy and quiet. That's... It's the media, it's the mid-range ghosts that you have to watch out for. It's the media. It's the media out to get ghosts. <laughs> Damn liberal media. That's where I thought you were going with that. Damn liberal media always making ghosts out to be, I don't know what, racist? Racist just because they're from 300 years ago? They're usually pale. <laughs> Do you like that TikTok I sent you this morning? Yeah, You've been mistaken for a ghost not one, but three times. <laughs> While walking in the woods. I'm not floating through the woods. I'm walking like a normal bisexual through the woods with purpose. <laughs> She's my new hero. Maybe we'll add that to uh, to the social media at some point in time, just so I'm not entertaining my, only myself here. Yeah, that's not, that'd be nice if our entertainment-focused venture here bothered to entertain anyone else, but that's really not our strong suit, is it? <laughs> rambling. Rambling's my strong suit. Rambling and drinking. I'm Scotch Irish. I don't know what more you want from me. I don't know. What do we? What? Why did we start a podcast? What are we? What are we trying to get out of this podcast? Money. That didn't work out. No, that's no. Fame, glory, none of those. Pizza rolls. I just ate those. Oh. Fuck. Uh, to entertain ourselves. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. <laughs> that's about ninety percent of what we do. Something to do. <laughs> It's also a good excuse. You can say, oh, well, I'd like to do that, but I got to record my podcast today, so I can't. Yeah. And then people are like, you have a podcast? And then they listen to five minutes of it, and they're like, oh, I forgot to check out your podcast. <laughs> your drink pictures you posted on Instagram on your personal account look great, though. Somebody was diving through our back catalog the other day, and I thought maybe it was Kel because she was trying to write a play on short notice, so I asked her, I said, are you writing a play about a woman whose husband starts a podcast? <laughs> that was not what she was doing. <laughs> That's probably the best. I said, oh yeah, well someone was deep diving our old catalog. She goes, oh, I need to do that someday, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I don't expect you to at this point. <laughs> I've given up on that. <laughs> Sean like heard a clip from the clip show where he's in the background. And he got really confused, and I was like, that was you. And he was like, oh, okay. He just, like, walked away. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. So, we got pirates. Well, you've got a story that, that, that has the word pirate in it. It does have the word pirate in it. I've got a story that's vaguely pirate-related, but a lot more crazy person-related. Fair enough. 
Should who should? I have reason to believe pirates are crazy people. All right. Well. I mean, to go first. You went first last time. Well, but I don't know. I feel like your drink is going to be more focused on your story since my drink was focused on my story last time. I'm a narcissist, so I should go first then, so that. Okay. So that there's some actual progress to, uh, you know, we'll have my segment that is not important at all, and then we'll have your segment that leads into your drink. That is not important at all, and then we'll have a cocktail. <laughs> Tie some on and go pick my kid up from camp. So. Hey, Uncle Charlie. Wanna go bust some ghosts? <laughs> God, I hope Proctor listens to this. All right. Do we have listeners in Eugene frequently? Uh, Possibly, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know how frequently, but. All right, so this is a story that you may remember because it's fairly recent. This is a story. Is that the lady that marries the pirate ghost? It might be. (laughs) Yes, it is. The story, and I go way back. (laughs) Story of the woman who married a pirate ghost. So so we haven't buried the lead. Um, (laughs) Sorry. This is the story of Amanda Large, and uh, she was a, or she is a. Large woman, a woman from Belfast, North Ireland. She's a divorced mother. She had five kids, but one of them died in 2010 at three months old. Okay. Died of SIDS, which is what encouraged her to start looking into the supernatural. She'd been a lifelong agnostic, and she decided she wanted to find a link to the other side after her son died. So she started getting into spirituality and paganism and wicca some of the articles i read really wanted to dive into the paganism aspect and the wiccan aspect and then after they did all this deep dive into those things they had spokespeople who said yeah we don't condone what she did this is weird so (laughs) so there's a lot of rules in wicca it's not as important as uh some of those articles made it sound yeah around 2014 and some of these dates are a little fudgy because I read a lot of articles on this, and like it was interesting because you'd read one article and it sounds like, oh, it's just kind of normal and quirky, but then you start putting it together with other articles and other articles and other articles, and there was some insanity happening here. <laughs> this is this was a woman who needed some counseling. <laughs> Around 2014, she encountered an entity that identified himself as Jack Teague, a Haitian pirate who had died 300 years ago. It is worth noting that by this point in life, Amanda was working as a Jack Sparrow impersonator. <laughs> is is Mr. Teague a real pirate? Well, a historian from the uh, from a university in Florida from the Pirate tra- Society. No, a, a Florida history professor was trying to dig up any evidence of Jack Teague from Haiti in the 17th century and found nothing. He also wanted to point out that Haiti was a French colonized country and that Teague is generally an Irish name. <laughs> Amanda, like I said, she was a Jack Sparrow impersonator. After she watched Pirates of the Caribbean, she decided that she kind of looked like Jack Sparrow and started dressing as a pirate and incorporating that into her business, which is some sort of entertainment, organizing, and event planning. I feel like there's a lot of karaoke in her event. Possibly. And I didn't look into this, but I did find somewhere that said that it's kind of an overlooked detail from the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, but apparently in those, Jack Sparrow's father was named Edward Teague. So (laughs) that just kind of adds to the um, shakiness of this whole 300-year-old Jack Teague ghost. Fair enough. So Amanda claims at first that she didn't believe Jack. It took six months for him to convince her of his identity. She'd tell him to go away, and he'd come back, and she'd tell him to go away and come back, and eventually started having conversations with him. And he wore her down. He did wear her down, and she said that she had fact-checked some of the stories that he told her, and that's what convinced her in the long run. He but... was creeping into her DMs, telling her she was beautiful every day, and asking to see Vagine. <laughs> I don't know what stories it was that he's told, because I haven't seen anything about anyone else ever corroborating any of them. Jack never appeared or manifested to her physically. He kind of remained an energy that she felt out or could see in her mind's eye. She liked to imagine he looked like Bob Marley. That fits so many Haitian pirate descriptions. Doesn't it? Yeah. Jack claimed that he was executed for thievery by hanging in his time, or I did see one of the stories said that he was executed for rescuing slaves. So the story is different in different articles, which is another kind of... I mean, uh, I guess rescuing slaves at that point in time would be considered this similar to thievery. Well, you know what? That's a good point. I hadn't considered that. 
Anyway, he was attracted to Amanda through his own heartache of having been left at the altar while he was living. Yes, because weddings in the 1700s went that way. That's fine. <laughs> she forgot her white dress. It was a whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, also, Amanda claimed that Jack was the real world inspiration for the character of Jack Sparrow, which... We all know the real world inspiration for Jack Sparrow was... is What's his name? What is his name? God. Keith Richards. Keith. Keith Richards. I was like Richard something. No. Well, but I mean, that wasn't the inspiration for writing the no. character. That was the inspiration Johnny Depp took for building the character. Still, we're so. rolling with it. Okay. So, yeah. Like I say, there's some confusion in here. Some personal, not supernatural confusion in there. Anyway, uh, Jack and Amanda's relationship continued and it, it became intimate after a time. Amanda would include him in things she did, such as watching TV or going on long romantic getaways. <laughs> she eventually found herself attracted to him sexually, which freaked her out because she had never heard of that happening before with a ghost. She told people that it had a sense of the forbidden or taboo to it, like falling for a friend's husband, but she believed Jack was her soulmate. And Amanda says that she long struggled with her sexuality as a child. She eventually ended up identifying as asexual, so... She has five kids and she's asexual? I'm not saying that's not possible. Well, I mean, I mean, I haven't heard many stories from her ex-husband, so I don't know what his deal was. <laughs> like, he could have been saying, ah, well, we'll fuck the sexuality, and yeah, he could have been one of those guys. Yeah. But her being asexual to her, a relationship that was all energy and non-physical just kind of seemed right up her alley. <laughs> Still, she claimed she never felt comfortable with the idea of casual sex with an unmarried ghost. So eventually Jack proposed to her. And in 2016, Amanda and Jack married in a pagan hand fasting ceremony, taking his name Teague. So the wedding itself had to take place in international waters. Ireland and the UK both refused to do posthumous weddings. Well, okay, and here's the thing. As someone that has done hand fastings and is legally set up to do hand fastings, fuck you, you're not marrying a ghost on my watch. <laughs> well, they had to uh, take some measures to make sure that came about, like they had a medium on hand to talk for Jack, and since he had no fingers, she held a candle that they could put the ring on instead of his own hand. Well, I mean, I guess in some states it's legal to have a proxy get married for you. And it's, yeah. in even fewer states, it's legal to have a proxy for both sides of the marriage. So you can just, huh. like, send two people to get married for you. It's fine. <laughs> that's kind of awesome. Now, something that's legal in some places is marriage to a dead person. Necrogamy. Like, monogamy, but necro. Necrogamy. What are France... But you can't be, you can't be poly necro. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not even sure. I'd have to take some time out to even think about what that might mean. Um, <laughs> France has a provision that allows the president of the Republic to authorize the celebration of a marriage where one of the future spouses is deceased for serious reasons. And I love that they have in the um, law for serious reasons, because I would run for the president of France just so that I could marry people, the dead people, just <laughs> on a fucking whim. So it's nice they put the for serious reasons provision <laughs> in there. <laughs> Over the years, this has included the partners of men killed in World War I, and there's a case of a partner of one of the 400 victims from a dam collapse in 1959. As recently as 2009, a woman was allowed to marry a man who proposed to her just two days before dying in an auto accident. I mean, I don't support this, but I do know in specific religions, if you are not legally married, you don't get, which doesn't make sense to me because let's that great church and stay here but what that's a that's a whole different story but if you're not legally married you don't get to go to heaven together you go to different yeah. heavens apparently yeah you go to yeah, singles so, heavens so china sudan south korea germany south africa japan and the u.s all have similar contingencies boy i forget the story now there was a, a case in 1987 i think it was in florida where this went through and i forget what the details were but it does happen in the u.s just not in ireland and the uk so, like I said, they had a medium stand in. They had a candle stand in. Amanda said, the reaction I've gotten is really quite shocking. In this day and age, it's cool to be whatever, or so you think, but apparently we are not yet open-minded enough in society to accept relationships between us and other realms. She's never met, like, a mixed-race couple or a gay couple, has she? Well, I don't know. I mean, she works in entertainment, right? Like, 
I mean, I know it's entertainment in Northern Ireland, but still. She hoped her coming out as a spectophiliac would help embolden others who felt the same but were ashamed. Which, and here's another side thing I found. A, another spiritual guidance, this one from Bristol, UK, Amethyst Realm, who has been on TV interviews. I bet reports, that's her birth name, too. Probably. Reports had to having sex with more than 20 spirits in her time. She even described her seduction rituals in TV interviews. And I guess it has escalated to the point where she's really trying to have a phantom baby with one of the spirits. Apparently she was. Oh, honey. Apparently she got in uh, into this because her own wedding was called off when she caught her fiance in bed with a male ghost. I mean, I feel like if you're at this level of delusion, like a phantom pregnancy is not that far off. It's it could it, that is that's an actual medical day. It is that's true. So in October, and see, this is where part of this got confusing because every article I read talked about the wedding, and some of them said it was in 2018, some said 2017, some said 2016. Eventually, through digging, I found out they actually had two wedding ceremonies. They had the first one, which was very small, and it was just the people that had to be there. In October 2017, they ended up holding another ceremony that was a little bit bigger, and it was able to allow more friends and family and, coincidentally, press to attend. (laughs) <laughs> did more ghosts come did his ghost family come not, i have so many questions not that i've saw any reports on they didn't condone the wedding or I, they just I they were know. busy i don't know i did see uh a couple reports from her family i didn't see anything about his family selfish she's selfish so the second wedding was held a couple months after her book a life you will remember was released <laughs> what what convenient time <laughs> yeah exactly now this is where it just I'm I'm including links to this book and several other things as we progress here because this is amazing. So, A Life You Will Remember is a semi-autobiographical romance novel where Amanda finds Jack Sparrow transported through time and waking up in Belfast of Victoria Square in her own era. I just <laughs> Honey, your fan fiction is out of control. <laughs> so, after the uh, second ceremony, Within weeks, she began to notice little things were wrong. Like, she started to develop perianal abscesses and cirrhosis, as well as feeling drained of energy often. She didn't want... Wait, perianal? Perianal. This is, this is like, butt sores? I meant to look it up, and I forgot and to. And, like, like, I'm picturing this as, like, butt to vag sores, because that's where the peri would come in. Well, that's kind of what I was... Let's see... Infected cavity filled with pus in the rectum that appears as a tender red lump under the skin near the anus. What did you put in your butt, lady? What did you put in your butt? (laughs) Ghost dick isn't going to do that to you. (laughs) Well, she didn't want to prescribe any of these problems as being related to Jack right away or anything else supernatural. So she consulted others about her and Jack's relationship, like uh, mediums and psychics, but it was assured she was in no danger despite the problems continuing and escalating. She eventually became convinced that It was a result of every time she had sex with Jack, she developed the abscesses. So maybe she got pirate ghost herpes. I don't know. It's his pirate ghost dick is infected. I mean, it would be. (laughs) He's going to a lot of ports. There were not a lot of antibiotics in the in the (laughs) seventeen hundreds. So eventually, she just cut Jack off from all sexual activity. Then in May 2018... Well, your wedding, your marriage is just going downhill. Well, yeah. Then in May 2018, Amanda suffered a near-fatal bout with sepsis, which is nasty. After having an operation to save her life and the multiple red flags that had been happening over time, Amanda decided that it had to be Jack that was causing her distress. God damn it, Jack. She determined, like a lot of spirits, that he needed an energy source, and since the wedding ceremony, she had become that source. I mean... She didn't look into this very well, did she? Well, I've seen a lot of things like, you know, a lot of mediums have problems with being drained by spirits. And yes, no, you say yes. You can. We're we're hanging oh, out that's here. Po- that's, that's that's what you're saying. You're not yeah, you're not saying it's bullshit. Drink. You're saying it's her fault for saying yeah. Go for it. Got you. Copy. I don't know. I invited the demon in, but it was here. He won't go away. <laughs> it's my ass. It creates little puss buckets. <laughs> What's that from House of a Thousand Corpses? <laughs> Meanwhile, you got a devil sticking out your ass saying, Holy Miss Molly, we got us a live one. <laughs> I don't know. I just remember little socks with Mickey Mouse on one side and Donald Duck on the other. <laughs> I'm going to go watch that after we're done with this. So 
she wanted to make sure that Jack was aware that he was the culprit, and I didn't get a story as to how, but she determined that, yes, he was aware of what was happening and was complacent in it. She said he never accepted his own death, so he wanted to try to continue living on through her body. She wanted to break it off with Jack, but her attempts were met with threats on her life. Apparently Jack, who had been very sweet before, had a total change of attitude as she grew distant and and wanted the separation. She also believed him responsible for the death of her dog, Toby, which that's on her for naming a dog Toby. Why would you name her dog Toby? Don't name anything. It's for the love of LeVar Burton. Ever since the 70s, nobody should name anything Toby. Like that should be. Pretty much. (laughs) Yeah. No. (laughs) Can we just agree to that as a society? (laughs) Toby is not an appropriate name. (laughs) Amanda had a soul extraction, in quotes, similar to an exorcism performed by a shaman in December 2018 to rid herself of the connection to Jack. Why do I feel like this is the Guanon shaman? I don't know. Um, I did see some some articles use the quantifier self professed shaman most of them are well, that's that was kind of like i was trying to give the benefit of the doubt like it's not like you go to shaman school and get your masters in shamanism but it, i mean most of her friends were i don't feel like there's a lot of legitimate shamans in ireland let's just start with that i don't see why i mean there could be i would go looking for a druid if i was in ireland right so that's that's just me i'm not saying there's not options no. i'm just saying i don't think that is a realistic yeah. one anyway so they had the, the soul extraction exorcism thingy. And though she still has, she's got a long history of long standing health issues, even before Jack, but her physical health has seemed to improve greatly since removing him, throwing away that gross candle. Uh, she's. <laughs> I mean, maybe the candle had something on it, and that's what she put in Well, that's, I mean, you gotta wash. They're poor. You gotta wash those things off. Yeah, you gotta, yeah, you gotta sanitize the shit between these Especially if she had it out on a, she had it out on a boat. With fucking gross fish water. And then, like, I'm sorry, your ass is not a clean place. <laughs> anyway, she likes to bring up that she has never been diagnosed with mental health issues. That got brought up a couple times. Did anyone try to die? Like, has she ever talked to a psychiatrist? That I don't know. You know who else <laughs> has never been diagnosed with mental health issues? My dog. But he's got some. <laughs> so... She regrets the problems her experience caused her, but she says that she's grateful for the lessons that she's learned. So since the exorcisms, Amanda, now going by Amanda Sparrow Large. I really wish it was Amanda Large Sparrow. That would be better for me. <laughs> well, when she wrote her book, her author name was Amanda Sparrow Large Teague. Large Teagues. <laughs> <laughs> She's stayed away from the world of the spirituality and paranormal since then. She advocates that spirituality and spirits are not something to idly mess around with weird a doy (laughs) in may 2019 she published a new book called a new attitude that recounts her experience with jack and the relationship i got a new attitude so i've got links for her books that i'm definitely going to put into the uh notes i would prefer anyone bootlegs these though i feel like she does not need to profit off of this i've got some links to a couple of interviews with her and uh amanda realm and like this show that they got Amethyst inter- Realm. Amethyst Realm, that's right. Thank you. That uh the show that they were reviewed on has some really interesting uh things. It's like a morning show, like Good Morning America or something like that. So let's see what some of these other You're just gonna bring up a D billions video, aren't you? Teenager lost his sight due to eating only chips. These aren't nearly as exciting as some of the ones that I saw when I first found this article. My husband tried to kill me by sabotaging my parachute. Why you never let your husband touch your parachute? Right. How to get paid 24,000 pounds a year to play with puppies. That might be a good one to look into. Can you send me that? I'm going to need that link. Having sex five times a day wasn't enough. I mean, it depends on the day. Woman performs live vagina facials. <laughs> I'm, I mean, sometimes you just got to sit on a face. How to check for breast cancer, and they've got, like, a topless woman and a doctor with his hands over her nipples. <laughs> this is a morning show in the UK. So anyway, that's as complete as I could compile, and I went through a ton of fucking articles on Amanda Teague. Amanda Teague hug and kiss. Amanda Large, come Sparrow, come Teague, come Large. Come Large, and that's why she's got ass pustules. <laughs> Ass pustules from her gross barnacle candle. Her ghost husband might be cheating on her. <laughs> um, did you? Did you, I don't feel like you mentioned that they did, that they did legally get divorced. 
Um, I never saw anything that said that they legally got divorced, oh. but they, they weren't ever technically legally married. That's true. So but, yeah. I'm just... They did cause a lot of headlines when she announced that she was divorcing him, but <sighs> as near as I could tell, the divorcing was just the uh, exorcism. You know, they're like another set of royals for us. They are as important to, to the uh, country as the royals. I don't understand you Americans that are obsessed with the royals. Like, to I me... Mean... I mean, I find this woman much more interesting than the royals, if I'm perfectly honest. I mean, Harry's a fox. I don't know, like, William, I don't know what the hell happened Yeah, to him. what happened? Because William was the hot one, and now he just looks like a poorly aging Mormon. I used to be older than him, but I'm pretty sure he's ten years older than me now. Like, I don't yeah. get it. All right, I have a story. This is this story. is not the story we want, but the thing that opens up is... True stories! Snoods. I have an article about snoods, snoods up. Do I know what those are? Uh, 1940s thick hairnets that were, like, decorative. Think of swing, no. swing dancers, their hair in it. They always have their hair free-flowing in my fantasies, so. Well, I was talking about reality. Here, just, let me find a picture of a snood. It's just, it sounds like a Saturday morning cartoon character. I mean, I'm not saying it's not also that. That's a snood? Oh, okay. okay. I was uh, looking up snood timelines, debating if that is appropriate. For you misspelled nudes. Let's just be honest. Uh, yeah, you're looking up nudes. You spelled snoods by mistake. And here we are. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> if snoods were 1950s appropriate, so I can just put my hair in one for Back to the 50s because I'm sure I'm bartending. A lot of food goes past the back of my head when I'm bartending, so I like to have my hair secure because I have pink hair right now. And if you find a pink hair in your food, you're gonna know where it came from. Just beehive it up, and then it's going to be out of the way. You know how early I have to be at work? We're a brunch restaurant. We're, we're open for <laughs> breakfast. I wake up at 4.30. Yeah, so now how... you're a terrible human. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, all right. We're going to talk about one of my favorite stories. Okay. From one of my favorite places. Which, the story here, the gold in this story, is not the actual haunting that's happening. It's the lead up to the haunting. <laughs> the history of the haunting. So there is a place in New Orleans called the Sultan's Palace. Have you heard of Sultan's Palace? No. Okay. I mean, in Aladdin, yeah, but not in New Orleans. There's also a Sultan's Palace, Iris. Does that help anyone? Iris? Yeah. Like a... Plant. Oh. I thought we were talking like a magical gemstone plant. And there's also the Sultan's Swat. <laughs> and the Sultan's Swing. Yeah, but I watched the Sandlot the other day, so I'm with the Sultan's Swat. The Great Bambino? The Great Bambino. So, okay. The site that the Sultan's Palace sits at is 716 Dauphine Street in New Orleans. Originally, that site was home to a small brick and wood dwelling dating back to 1780 that was owned by a free woman of color. She sold it in 1811 to Francois Darby, who reportedly lived there until her death in 1816. By 1835, the original house had been demolished, or at least incorporated, into the Sultan's Palace as we now know it, which was built by a dentist named Joseph Coulon Gardet. Apparently, he was not great with his money, and he sold it four years later to a plantation owner and merchant, Jean-Baptiste Lepreté. Sorry, if I'm just going to pretend I'm, I know what I'm saying when words are in French. Oh, <laughs> oh. So he bought the house. We'll post pictures, but the house is like pretty cool looking. It's got cast iron balconies all the way around. It's got sidewalk level windows around the house. It's got a half a basement. But Le Prete, Le Pretre, I don't know. He bought the house and then um, he spent most of his time out on plantations. And there's some different stories here from the different sources I've looked at, but it sounds like he wasn't doing super well financially at this time either. <laughs> so he was like, I should lease this house to somebody. Like, I don't want to sell it. I really like this house, but probably can't afford to have this set empty while I'm living on my plantation. This is just where things get foggy. We know some things, some things are a mystery. It is said that a Turkish man and one servant arrived in town and asked to rent the house. Uh -huh. Some stories say the man says he was the brother of the sultan. Some say it was the sultan. This man, this, this Turkish rich man, rents this house. And then all sorts of interesting things start happening. The house becomes just a constant party house. 
constant party house. But the thing is, no one knows who's partying in there, like, who's at these parties, because it's no one local. No one's ever seen coming in and out of the house. They hear music. They hear orgies. I saw stories about no one would come out even to, like, receive packages. They would just, there was, like, a little spot that they were left in exchange where their gold bar payments were left. And then they would go into the house sometime in the night. All they know is there's these Middle Eastern people in this house. Having eyes wide shut parties. Having all the parties. And the parties were usually all night. And then the house would be relatively quiet during the day, but you would still hear Turkish music most of the time. Mm-hmm. There was the scent of opium in the air all the time, too. Woo! It sounds like a good good time, Woo! to be honest here. So one night, a night like any other there's just the partying going down at the Sultan's house. And it does say that there was quite a storm that night. I don't think that that has a whole lot to do with the story, but we'll get to the conspiracy theories at the end here. <laughs> um, so there's a nasty storm. Nothing, nothing sinister happens in New Orleans unless there's a nasty storm. You should, right? you should know that by now. The rest of the time, pinkies out, button to the collars, no <laughs> ankles showing. It's a pretty teetotaler town, unless there's a storm. <laughs> so anyway, there is a storm. So, well, you know, most people are in their homes. They're not, like, running around the street. But the party's still going on. Like, the neighbors here, the party going on like normal. The next morning, a man walking through the area, through the French Quarter, notices pools of blood coming out of the house. <laughs> he walks, like, he's like, that's not normal. <laughs> And the music's not playing, and the music's always playing. Huh. Party house so, isn't partying. That's what yeah. you're be suspicious. That's, a, that's weird. That's weird. So he notifies the police that he's like, some spunky's going on over there, guys. You need to go check this out. <laughs> so they show up, and what they find is everyone, everyone in the house is dead. A lot of them are dismembered, cut into pieces. Body parts are everywhere. Blood is everywhere. Like, it is slasher flick on steroids in this place. (laughs) Yipes. And most of them appear to have been murdered and slashed by, like, bladed weapons. Mm -hmm. They can't find the sultan. They're like, what the hell is going on here? All these people are dead. We don't know who did it. The sultan's missing. They never really find any evidence pointing out who this was. They don't find the sultan. There are some stories that the Sultan was buried alive in the courtyard or that he was just buried in the courtyard, but I've seen nothing that actually indicates that other than people saying, well, there's a theory. Yeah. The theory that it sounds like the police went with was because of the storm, pirates blew into New Orleans and the pirates were bored and took out this entire party. Because, you know, when you're bored, why not go ahead and... And well, risk the life of your entire crew picking a fight with strangers. It should be mentioned that as the indulgent sultan, he's got signs of wealth everywhere. Like There is that. There's, he's, you know. Yeah. He's not hiding that he's got gold and jewels yeah. and lavish lifestyle here. So, like, that makes sense that they just, you know, have some true. plundering to do. Yeah. But it turns out the man that's claiming to be the sultan is not the sultan. <laughs> he is the brother of a Turkish sultan who was essentially banished from Turkey by his brother for stealing from him and just being a general douchebag. <laughs> so there's another theory. So, and this, so where'd all this money come from? Is it stuff he stole or was it I like believe a penance? It's like, or? It could be a combo. I'm not sure. Yeah. They don't tell us where the money comes from, but like not really the Sultan. He has all this money. He's Turkish. Mm-hmm. He likes opium and orgies. Who doesn't? But, you know, that's where we're at with that. So there is a theory that the Sultan was sick of his shit uh-huh. <laughs> and sent his men to annihilate him and just the other people that were there were just, you know. Yeah. Just, sorry, you were there. You thought we got to take you out. Yeah, yeah. And I have seen one or two theories that think that maybe it wasn't like the Sultan's actual guards. Maybe the Sultan commissioned the pirates to do this. Mm. So it looked like it was a plunder, not a murder. Yeah. They never figured out if the fake sultan, whose name was Suleiman, or at least he went by Suleiman, if he uh, he was buried alive, was he kidnapped, did he escape? Based on the what's going on with the hauntings, I don't think he escaped. Yeah. But that's, you know, 
this is speculation at this point in time. Yeah. The property's undergone multiple owners, renovations, and things over the decade. I mean, the building's still standing from the early 1800s. I believe around the late 50s, early 60s, they turned this building into condos. <laughs> but there are trends of paranormal activities throughout the property that are reported by visitors, owners, that sort of thing. Mm. So a lot of people have reported, and as well as people walking by the building, have reported seeing what sounds like the same consistent man dressed in Middle Eastern garment appearing on walls of the home, in windows. His face will appear and then vanish. It's like huh. You'll see him walk past the window. Yeah. There's also reports of phantom screams and shrieks. And the most interesting part... Ghost story. I mean, I do think that's been reported also, but... <laughs> There's been reported what sounds like the thudding of body parts hitting the ground. Not a whole body, yeah. body parts. Which is a common sound that everybody knows and can identify easily from a distance. Well, I mean, <laughs> you know what a body hitting the ground sounds like. At least I do. Yeah. Drowning pool. Yeah. Let the bodies hit the floor. Exactly. Let the bodies hit the floor. Right. So, yeah, they do also hear bells ringing, chimes, different incenses. Well, that's what we've got going on as far as a haunting. Like, the haunting itself, not that spooky. But we got there in an interesting way. But we got there in an interesting, very interesting way. A little bit more about what has happened to the mansion since then. It was the New Orleans Academy of Art at one point in time. That school closed up during World War II because so many of the students were getting drafted. 1966, it was converted into condos. Is anything in their Airbnb appropriate? Can we go? I will have to look and see. You know, it depends on their CCNRs, if they're allowed to even have an Airbnb there. That's a lot fair. of condo associations don't allow short-term rentals. That's fair. Ask me how I know But that. they'll allow ghost orgies. Everyone allows ghost orgies. Ghost You're orgies. Tried? Body parts in the floor. Have you ever tried to stop a ghost orgy? It's a lot of work. <laughs> Try to organize a few and then try to stop them. Yeah. So that's my, um, my story of Sultan's Palace. I mean... Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of hauntings in New Orleans and a lot of like seedy stories, but I feel like this one takes the cake. It's a pretty good one as far as mysterious what the fuck was even happening here. Yeah. What the fuck was happening here when people were alive and what the fuck was happening here when everyone died. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you got a drink to go. Well, as per usual, I'm kind of uh, working out some kinks here. I haven't fully committed to all parts of this yet. Does it taste like Turkish Delight? I don't know if I'm that talented, because I'm not sure I've ever had Turkish delight, so I can't guarantee. Does it taste like the bowl of an old hookah? Yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to okay. take an old hookah. We're yeah. not going to clean it. No. We're just going to pour some vodka in it, swish it around. <laughs> A hookah shot. Yeah. I think it's, you know, the win-win. It's the evolution of the hookah stank is the hookah shot. I mean, it just kind of depends on what kind of shisha you were smoking, I think. So. Okay. All right. It's, the flavor can change depending on that. Yeah, so it's gonna, it'll taste like an ashtray, but what the kind of ashtray? Fruit and tobacco and, you know. Right. We grew up in the 80s. We drank from ashtrays before. Never on purpose, but, you know, it shit happens when you're a kid. I mean, do people put out cigarettes and soda cans at parties. It's not your fault. It's not the soda can you thought it was. Shit happens. Shit happens. Anywho. So my thought here was to go with a maybe a Mediterranean-inspired lavish cocktail. So Crab and goat cheese. My plan here is we're we're working. There are fig liqueurs out there. Hmm. I cannot okay. find them locally, so I'm going to make oh. one. Okay. It's brewing. It's brewing back there, which just is essentially soaking vodka and figs and some sugar. If anyone's not aware, the fast way to make a liqueur out of basically anything is just soak it in cheap vodka. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Usually when I add sugar to make it a liqueur, but yeah. that's neither here nor there. So, we're going to have some fig liqueur. This is where I'm really not sure. I can't decide if this should be a vodka drink or like a cognac drink, maybe a whiskey drink. Could be a gin drink, but I don't think that's the right route. Not a lager drink? Or a cider drink. Okay. But I'm kind of thinking maybe cognac since it's New Orleans. Okay. We'll see. We're going we're gonna to give a trial run. It might be awful. And then we'll, we'll switch it up. We're going to make a Turkish 75. I'm not putting bubbles in this, but... Oh, okay. I can. I put bubbles in everything. <laughs> I put bubbles on sorbet. So anyway, figs. We're going to throw some honey in here. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a little thyme. I feel like that might be. Or some cardamom. 
some purple olives. Sorry, I'm locked on this Mediterranean thing. I, I'm. Uh, no, I know. I need you to go hit your head on the wall. Oh. You, you had you had the dumb. Can I do it later? Yeah, you can wait till we're done recording. But all right, I'm not there to like facepalm you. So. <laughs> but yeah, I think we're gonna go kind of martini style here. Okay. Well, that's my plan. All right. Well. We'll look forward to seeing what the finished concoction of that. I mean, I'll have the finished concoction before fig the episode based. comes out. No, no. Yeah, yeah. I'm just we're get, we're that... doing fig and honey. You know what? I might throw a little uh, elderflower liqueur in there, too, because bartender's ketchup. Ooh, fig and honey. Ooh, fig and honey. I'm not sure what that's a reference to, but it's got to be something, right? Just you white Henry figgins. Just you white. Honey figgins. Uh, just you wait, honey figgins. That'd be a good stripper name. <laughs> it would be a good stripper name. <laughs> At least a burlesque name. Maybe not like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe not like drip clubs. No, no. Those all have to be names like Diamond or Sapphire or Chenille. Do you know a stripper named Sapphire? <laughs> I'm sure you do. I'm always disappointed in one of my friends because her sister, one of the known strippers in this valley for a long time, and she has no idea what her stripper name is. And I'm like, that's really disappointing. <laughs> I really want to know what her stage name is. Right. Well, I'm looking at the calendar, and this one will come out on the 6th, which is when we will be in the thick of road Into the fickle bit. Into the fickle bit. And the episode after that, the next one would be the 20th, and I don't know if we're going to have enough time to record something on the road and edit it before this I one. assumed we were going to record at least one more before the Yeah, so we're going to have to hazard. record one more before we go on our road trip. So... What kind of theme should we roll with? Do you want to do Missing 411 for that? So I'm on edge the entire trip? You don't want to do it while we're on trip? I thought we could do Missing 411 while we're on the trip. I mean, that's assuming our children allow (laughs) us to record on this trip. That's fair. I'm hoping that before we leave Grants Pass, we can get a session in. And then idealistically, we could get another session in while we're on the road. But those are both kind of like, we'll have to wait and see. So maybe we should do it beforehand just to cover the bases. That's my thought. Because where we're going, there's lots of hauntings. Like Sonora is super haunted. Yosemite's got its own thing. Yeah. I think we should do Missing 411 before our trip. So I'm on high All alert. Right. Make sure my baby doesn't get stolen by alien bug fairies. <laughs> or cannibals in the national parks as the TikTokers, would you like me to believe? Feral cannibal humans. Chuds. I mean, I'm not saying there's none of those. <laughs> but I just don't think they're responsible for the Missing 411. No. Nah. Also, a lot of the missing 401 kind of implies that the government is complicit, and I feel like if it was just, like, feral cannibal humans, that those would be easy to, you Take know, out. for the government to, yeah, for the government to get in there and ferret I out. feel like we could... As opposed to extra-dimensional kidnappers. Yeah, I mean, you could put a tag on, on feral cannibal humans. Yeah. Okay, uh, my notes, I, my eyes have locked onto my notes for, hey, next episode, we discuss next episode. So... I guess this is the time to say, hey, check out our show you notes. You don't know? You don't just um, wing them? That's, that's why no, your no. stories come out better than mine. Possibly. Mine is yeah. just drunk history every week. <laughs> yeah, like most of my stories have like two or three pages of notes that I'm working off of. I'm flopping back and forth <laughs> between different websites. Well, see, mine all comes off websites, but I organize and I say, oh, okay, I want this point to be. I'm not allowed to point. touch my computer if anyone, you know, like my child's home, so. Well, yeah. Which is going to make starting classes in a month here interesting, but neither here nor there. Well, can you get away with it if you're typing into Google Docs on your phone? Because I do that a lot of times. Yeah, but these don't work very good. What don't work very good? My hands. fingers. <laughs> My hands don't work so good. Hence, I'm on prednisone right now. Phone so, typing Elon is Musk, if you're listening to Elon Musk, uh, Katie is willing to be an early adapter on Neuralink so that she can make her notes mentally mm. without having to use her hands. I can use my hands for other things. And I'm willing to be an early adopter on Neuralink because I'm really into cyberpunk shit, and that shit's been the coolest thing that I could imagine since I was, like, 12, so (laughs) So sign me up. That aside, check out our show notes. We will have, I've got lots of links for Amanda Large and Amanda Sparrow Large Teague and a little bit of Amethyst Realm. Amethyst Realm sounds, sounds like a nice place to climb into, though, let's be honest here. I mean, yeah, that would be... That'd be an all right realm to go to. I mean, could, it's better than ending up in the Fey Land. She sure. might have a cave of wonder. <laughs> but it's always got a ghost in it. Hush, <laughs> yeah. Can we, uh, can we mark it 
barnacle covered candles as a merch item? Is that something that people might I want? mean, I do make candles. That's that smell like vagina. Apparently the, the recipe for that's available. I do not make candles that smell like vagina, but I understand that was like a bergamot scented candle. Who's my vagina does not smell like bergamot. Are you trying to imply that Gwyneth Paltrow keeps a satchel of potpourri in her vagina when you know, it's not in use? Do you, boo-boo? Do you, boo-boo? But that sounds bad for your pH, all I'm saying. <laughs> Maybe it's just some, like, bergamot-infused coconut oil. That might not be too hard. I don't I, I just I need to stop analyzing this. I mean, yoni steaming is a thing, though. Bergamot, KY. No, I think she's yoni steaming with bergamot. Is that... Is that just what it sounds like? Exactly. So you know how people do steam their faces? Yeah. Okay. But it's not their faces. That's, that's what I was, that's what I was yeah. thinking. I wanted to make sure it wasn't like a hot rock thing, because I know about Yoni stones. So I wanted to make sure it wasn't like hot rock therapy, where they warm up a rock and set it on you. I mean, I love a hot stone massage, but I don't want those <laughs> in my cave of wonders. So buy some sweat. Check out our show notes. <laughs> Pray for our souls. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll have a your own yoni steaming satchels available. Hey, you know what we can do now with uh, some of the features they've added to Anchor is that we can ask a question in the show and people can use Anchor to respond to the question. Our audience isn't very interactive, though. That's very true. They're not going to tell me if they want me to make them yoni steaming tea bags. <laughs> but if you do, reach out. I'll do yeah. it just for the hell of it. I will okay. Google it. I won't just, you know, put random stuff in it. I'm saying, like, now we can, like, leave a question and people can answer the question after, or they can, or we can put in a poll and they can have, answer the poll. We'll ask them, have you ever steamed a yoni? <laughs> All right. <laughs> have you ever dated a ghost? Has your ghost Has your ghost ever steamed, steamed your yoni? yoni? <laughs> Sean just popped his head in, glared at me, and walked away. Stuck a feather in his cap and called it steamed yoni. That Yankee doodle. Um... Also in our show notes, we will have links to our website. We'll have links to our Patreon. We'll have links to our T Public Store. We'll have links to all the links that are fit to link social media. Link. Come to town. Come to say the princess, the princess Zelda. Zelda. It's dangerous. Take this. Um. Yeah. And then we'll talk about some stuff next time. Probably will hurt your head. Probably. If uh, you want it, baby. Always drink responsibly and in accordance with your local laws. Don't end up our next ghost or don't ghost fuck someone with a barnacle candle. If you have ass pustules, please see a medical professional. Yeah. And keep your barnacle candle out of your candle. If you're dating a ghost, please see um, a priest. Let's just go with a priest. If you're dating a ghost, don't agree to let it have access to your soul for all the time because... That won't end well. It really won't. It really won't. It's not good for anybody. You know, there's just... I don't know. There's so much stuff that... People do that's dumb? Well, it's just... I mean, people people find out about ghost hunting and paranormal investigation, and they go out and they get, like, really into it. It's like, oh, I'm gonna... I'm gonna rile up a ghost. And, oh, I'm gonna... And they... And they don't know how that shit can backfire. And I'm like, you know, read some books, like... So like, let's start with a book. Let's start with reading a book. It's like, this is this is why I don't personally, you know, I have no enthusiasm for ghost hunting, because I know how that shit can go awry, and I got kids, so I don't need that shit following me home. <laughs> I got kids. They're multiplying. I hope not. <laughs> All right. We should probably leave now. We said, yeah, we we said should, our things. We should, we should go. It's Goodbye. Go. We're leaving Bye. now. Bye. Sorry. We'll see you next time. Maybe. <laughs> Bye.